We talked about margins. Now let's get to rates of return. So what rates of return, so this is another type of profitability ratio, but this time what we're doing, so let's come back here, I'll change colors. So what we're doing is we're taking a measure of profit and we're dividing it by something. Okay, so in each case, okay, with each, each different type of rate of return, I'm always taking some measure of profit and dividing it by something. Now let's start with ROA. I think that's the easiest one to understand. Return on assets, we're taking net income, dividing it by the company's average total assets. If you're wondering, why do we divide it by average total assets instead of just total assets for the most recent balance sheet date? Remember that net income is for a period of time. Like it's like the net income for the last 12 months. Whereas average ass or excuse me, total assets, whenever you get that, it's from a balance sheet. And a balance sheet is a point in time. So we take the average of the assets over the prior two balance sheet dates and then the net income over that same time period. So that's why it's divided by average, if you're ever wondering that. So this is scaling the company's profit by its size in terms of assets. That's helpful if we're comparing two companies that are very, very different sizes. Okay, So I give the example here with Walmart and Dollar General. I'm sure you can think of other examples. A larger company, you would expect to have more net income just simply due to its size. What you'd really like to know if you're trying to measure performance and you know which company is doing better is what is your profit given the amount of assets that you have at your disposal, right? So that's what return on assets is telling us. It's a really helpful measure, and we'll actually get, I'll make another video where we decompose uh, ROA and we break it into the asset turnover and profit margin, and we try and think about that. And we'll also decompose in another video, we'll talk about return on equity, right? There's a three-step and a five-step uh, DuPont analysis decomposition that we'll do. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but return on equity, just taking the company's profit and dividing it by average uh, stockholders' equity. This is giving us an idea. We're thinking about equity as this is capital put up by investors into the company and then capital that is basically, you know, profits that have been earned and reinvested into the company. So this you can think about this as like shareholders, you know, their stake in this business. Now, you take that net income and divide that by that. That gives you an idea of, you know, what is the profit being generated given the capital that was invested into this business. Now, are we can be problematic in some cases. And I'm going to show you with Home Depot in a minute why it's not always a perfect measure. So remember, this is this average stockholders' equity. That is not the market value of the firm or anything like that. We're, I, don't, I don't want to confuse anybody. We'll dig into that in, in more detail in a minute. But I just want to talk about ROIC. So return on invested capital. We're taking the equity and the debt. We're basically saying, look, the the assets of this company basically are being financed by equity and debt and so we're going to put these together now you might say well but wait a minute liabilities and equity together are equal to assets so isn't this equivalent to this and the answer is no because this is not liabilities this is just debt remember there are a lot of different types of liabilities like things like unearned revenue which unearned revenue is, is a liability but it's not debt okay so return on invested capital and return on assets are not these are not the same thing now, sometimes you'll see return on net operating assets, uh, RONA, or some derivation thereof. Basically, you notice in the denominator here, we don't just have all the assets. Okay, We've got fixed assets. And what is that excluding by like, instead of, for example, why don't we just use ROA? Because return on assets, remember there's things like goodwill, where it's like, well, what is that? You know, well, we bought some company, we paid more than the net uh, value, uh, the, the net uh, fair market value, of the, the net assets. And so that's how we, we book this asset goodwill, but it's not an actual, we can't sell goodwill or something, right? So we just say, okay, well, let's just take the fixed assets, the property, plant, and equipment, things like that. And then the net working capital, just the current assets minus the current liabilities. And we do expect to earn a return on those things. So that's where we get like a measure like this Rona. If, you, if you're just like wondering where did that come from or why would somebody use that? Now, let's take a look at Home Depot. I, I told you there were some issues for return on equity. So we'll get to that in a second. But I've got now here return on uh, return on assets, return on equity, and return on invested capital. Now, let's start with ROA. We noticed that consistently, consistently, Home Depot has been much higher than low, about double, right? During this time period, Home Depot was earning double, like holding assets constant, holding assets constant. It was generating about double the amount of profit as Lowe's was. So that's wow, you know, Home Depot. Hats off to you, right? 
Uh, don't want to sound like a fanboy here, but at least for those few years, uh, outperforming Lowe's. Now, Lowe's was in their defense. They're in a little bit of a turnaround situation, hired a new CEO and stuff like that. And we could talk about that in our video if that's something you're interested in. But let's look at ROE. Remember I said that this measure is not always the greatest. You see here it's negative. So you might be like wondering like, oh, well, did they lose money? Like, what? No, no, they were profitable. They were profitable. What happened was Home Depot repurchased so much of its stock that its total stockholders equity actually became negative. And when it's, its total stockholders equity is negative, it's called a deficit. So they had a total deficit. So you had net income, but then divided by the average stockholders equity that was negative. That's why I had a negative number. So I don't think these make that much sense here. When you have a really low value of stockholders equity uh, or you have uh, you know negative equity then the ROE is isn't all that helpful right then you can look at something like return on invested capital which also is much higher for low uh, for Home Depot than it was for low so it looks like based on this analysis for this time period right 2017 to 2019 when it came to margins when it came to rates of return Home Depot was outperforming lows